Muslim scholars from 14 nations visit Xinjiang Uyghurs in China. In May 2014, the Chinese government launched the Strike Hard campaign against violent terrorism in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region Xinjiang or XUAR against Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims. However, they picked up all Uyghur Chinese Muslims and allegedly kept them in a concentration camp-like setting called re-education centers. Presently, a delegation consisting of more than 30 Islamic figures and scholars from 14 countries including the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Syria, Bahrain, Tunisia and Bosnia and Herzegovina begins their Xinjiang visit on Sunday. Visiting the exhibition on the fight against terrorism and extremism, talking with religious groups, and interacting with local residents at the bazaar, a group of Islamic figures and scholars are paying a visit to northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region to get a clear and better understanding of the region in contrast to the reports from USA about the torture in these camps. Ma Zingdi, party chief of the Xinjiang region, welcomed the delegation, the first foreign delegation to the region in 2023 at a meeting in Urumqi on Monday, acknowledging their support for China's stance on Xinjiang-related issues, as the US and some Western countries continuously spread rumors, throwing mud at China and attempting to sow discord between China and Islamic countries. However, righteous people in the Islamic world have never bent to the pressure from some Western countries nor have they been fooled by lies about the Xinjiang region, Ma said. Instead of following a few Western countries in using Xinjiang-related issues to interfere with China's internal affairs, these people have affirmed the development of the Xinjiang region, and say they have exposed the political practices of the US and some Western countries, and defended international fairness and justice, he said. During the Monday meeting, Ali spoke highly of the region's measures on countering terrorism and extremism, and also of the people who have contributed to the stability and development of the region. The scholar also noted that some anti-China forces have attacked China, mainly on topics related to the Xinjiang and Zizang regions and the island of Taiwan, which are related to China's national security. Ali also noted that the whole world needs China, and its stability and prosperity are also important to the world. In addition to meeting with the Xinjiang party chief, the delegation also visited an exhibition on the fight against terrorism and extremism on Sunday to learn more about how the region previously suffered from terrorism. The exhibition introduces the history of the Xinjiang region, which is an inseparable part of China. It also showed how the three forces of separatism, extremism, and terrorism plagued the region from 1990 to 2016, resulting in thousands of terror attacks and leaving tragic memories for local residents. Brief introductions on 52 terror attacks with photos of scenes from the attacks and victims from different ethnic groups and religious groups were displayed. I think that what we saw today reflected what actually happened on the ground. Anyone coming to visit the region should come and see this because this is part of its history. It's not only China the whole world has suffered from terrorism and extremism, said Ali. To learn more about the development of Islam in the region, the delegation also went to the Regional Islamic Association, the Xinjiang Islamic Institute, and some mosques in Urumqi on Sunday. Bai Shenfu, Vice Chairman of China's Islamic Association, noted that the Institute's new compound covers an area of 50,000 square meters with an investment of 279 million yuan, $41.1 million. Mestawi Mohammed Slahedin, advisor to the Tunisian Prime Minister, and also Secretary General of the Supreme Islamic Council, said he was impressed when he saw the Institute's new and unique compound and was amazed by the elegant design of the prayer hall. I believe that Muslims can feel the peace the moment they step in here. Human rights bodies believe China has detained more than 3 million Uyghurs against their will over the past few years in a large network of what the state calls re-education camps and sentenced hundreds of thousands to prison terms and many have been killed. 3 million Uyghur Muslims in concentration camps, but most countries silent. 3 million Uyghurs in re-education camps. Human rights bodies believe China has detained more than 3 million Uyghurs against their will over the past few years in a large network of what the state calls re-education camps, and sentenced hundreds of thousands to prison terms and many have been killed. 
China has been accused of committing crimes against humanity and possibly genocide against the Uyghur population and other mostly Muslim ethnic groups in the northwestern region of Xinjiang. A series of police files obtained by the BBC in 2022 has revealed details of China's use of these camps and described the routine use of armed officers and the existence of a shoot-to-kill policy for those trying to escape. The US is among several countries to have previously charged China of committing genocide in Xinjiang. The leading human rights groups Amnesty and Human Rights Watch have published reports accusing China of crimes against humanity. The declarations track reports that, as well as interning Uyghurs in camps, China has been forcibly mass sterilizing Uyghur women to suppress the population, separating children from their families, and attempting to break the cultural traditions of the group. Who are the Uyghurs? There are about 12 million Uyghurs, mostly Muslim, living in Xinjiang, which is officially known as the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region XUAR. Recent decades have seen a multitude of migrations of Ha Chinese, China's ethnic majority, into Xinjiang, allegedly orchestrated by the state to dilute the minority population there. Where is Xinjiang? Xinjiang lies in the northwest of China and is the country's largest region. Like Tibet, it is autonomous, meaning in theory it has some powers of self-governance. Human rights groups have voiced concerns that much of that cotton export is picked by forced labor, and in 2021 some Western brands removed Xinjiang cotton from their supply chains, leading to a backlash against the brands from Chinese celebrities and netizens. In December 2020, Research seen by the BBC showed that up to half a million people were being forced to pick cotton in Xinjiang. There is evidence that new factories have been built within the grounds of the re-education camps. In the early 20th century, the Uyghurs briefly declared independence for the region but it was brought under the complete control of China's new communist government in 1949.